Hey everyone, we're back, we're digging deeper, and this week I want to talk about caterpillar tunnels. <laughs> caterpillar tunnels in the market gardening community uh, for some people, they have a bad rep because obviously, you know, they, there's a lot of stories out there of caterpillar tunnels blowing up or snow loads coming in, destroying them. But for me, I've been farming for like 15 plus years with these tunnels and they play a really pivotal role because they're A, really inexpensive. They're the, they're the lowest, uh, the cheapest alternative out there to protect four beds uh, like, like we're doing here. There's really nothing that compares for the price that we pay. But the main, main advantage of caterpillar tunnels is that we can move them around up to three times in our season. So we'll have them on uh, spring crops, really, really early spring crops uh, in the spring. And then once these are established and then the temperatures are better, and then we're planting field tomatoes and we're planting field peppers, we'll move the caterpillar over onto tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, heat loving crops for the summer, which is really good, or crops that don't appreciate having rainfall too much on them. So we're creating an, a controlled environment in the summer. And then in the fall, uh, you know, we'll plant uh, early September seedlings, we'll plant them, but when in October and November and December it gets really cold again, we'll move those caterpillar uh, one more time. So for the same structure, we can have three zones that are covered at different times. And that's really the key of why these caterpillar tunnels are so useful. Now, how you go about securing them, mounting them, dismounting them, the whole uh, know-how behind building caterpillar tunnel is really, really what is the difference between having this strategy being success on the farm or this strategy perhaps being a big, a big failure. And so there's keys and there's trick about how to secure them rightly. And in this video, I'll be sharing some of these tricks. And we'll also be providing you guys with a cheat sheet about how to really, really anchor the plastic uh, with the V ropes that we use here at the farm. So you can check it out. All the information is below. But uh, yeah, it's windy today. Wouldn't be a great day to put the plastics on, but let's just roll around and I'll show you more about them. The number one thing is that when you're mounting the caterpillar tunnel, you want to make sure that it's super tight and super stretched. So the first thing is that you need to do this when it's not a windy day like today. So that you can really, really stretch the plastics and tie them correctly to your anchors. The second thing is that whenever you're putting a plastic on, you should be three people. So that makes a huge difference because there's going to be two people kind of holding it and then one people sliding it. And, and there's really an art to this if you want to do it correctly. And again, the reason why we're going through this motion is that caterpillar tunnels here, the way we farm, will be moved three times a year. So learning how to do this correctly without ripping the plastic and, and really securing it afterwards with the ropes, you know, is a big part of the success of this strategy. Another important trick is how to really tie them down at both ends. And, um, you know, a lot of people like to secure them uh, with wire locks, but wire lock, the problem with them is that if there's a strong wind, they'll just rip and you'll waste your plastic. So the goal with the Caterpillar tunnel is that nothing is really fixed uh, with boats, nuts and boats. It's all loose enough that if there's a really, really strong wind or tornado or anything, it won't rip, but it's tied enough in the smart ways using ropes and using T-posts so that you can easily install and remove and it's it's tight enough so that the the tunnel will stay grounded so really the devil's in the detail like in many things but you see here we have two posts and then we'll slip the the caterpillar between the t-posts the two posts and then we'll tie knots and that's how we secure them and the t-posts uh, they're easy to 
put, up, put in and to put them out, we also have a really cool tool that's going to help us putting, you know, rip them out so that we can move them to another spot later in the season. The other important really aspects of the caterpillars is using the ropes that are tying it down, that are securing it to the ground. And through the years of me dealing with caterpillar tunnels, I've tried many different tricks, but really the way we do it here is, as I would say, the ultimate. So you see you have your ropes that are coming here, and they're, they're in a V going from wide one side to the other, and they're secured uh, from, from the bottom. And so there's, there's a force trying to pull it down when we, when we tie the ropes, and even when the wind is trying to pull it up, you know, that's where the ropes play an important part. So learning how to secure this properly is the key here. Using slip knots is also another really key trick. It's like tying each ropes makes it possible to untie them easily and also to tighten them every week or every day. And by having it really tight, that's also how you can open them on a sunny day. So there's no roll-ups on a caterpillar tunnel. And again, the reason why there's no roll-ups is caterpillars, they need to be cheap. That's the whole strategy. It's a cheap structure that can be mounted and dismounted in about two hours and moved to another spot. And for me, uh, that's an important tool in our toolbox to be able to A, have uh, a really inexpensive shelter, especially when you're starting in market gardening. You know, these are the most inexpensive structures out there. So that's really important. But also, like I was explaining earlier, being able to move them around. And moving them around is the core strategy uh, of why caterpillar tunnels are awesome. You know, farming for season, you'll have different tools in your toolbox. You'll, you'll definitely have those big greenhouses. We have them here. You'll have some simple standalone houses. Uh, you'll also have caterpillar that I'm showing today. And we're also using row covers. So it's, it's a mix and match of all of these strategies that can really help you grow four season uh, in our Norton climate. But it's, again, caterpillar tunnels, the take home message is that they work wonders and they can really make, you can really make a lot of money with them, but you need to learn how to secure them and install them properly. So this is it for this week. I hope everyone liked the episode. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It gives us the signal that you guys are into it. And please tell your friends about it. If you know any growers out there that might appreciate the content and the knowledge that I'm trying to pass on, please share. That's the goal. And don't forget, we have a lot of goodies and we have a lot of stuff to share on the website of the Market Gardener Institute. Check it out. There's a lot of classes out there. There's a lot of stuff for everyone that wants to learn how to be a successful market gardener. There's a lot of opportunities to learn and that's what I'm about. I hope everyone's well. I hope things are growing and I hope that your caterpillar tunnels are going to stay put. JM out.